idea come to life. Join us as we go. Behind the door. Good evening, roomies, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Door with the Grey Rooms podcast. I am your host, Brooks Bigley, and with me tonight is Mark Taus, the venerable author of Season 4, Episode 10, entitled Eric's Tune. How are you this evening, Mark? Top notch, Brooks. Top notch. So all the better for speaking to you anyway. <laughs> it's been an entire, well, not an entire year, but definitely like something like 11 months uh, since you've been on the show with us. It, it seems like last week I was speaking to you. That's, that's just crazy. That's just crazy. Although the, the extra lines on the forehead, you know, you know, they're quite deceiving. But, <laughs> but it literally does. It seems like it seems like a week since we last spoke. That's a year is just immense. Yeah, I've got about 13 or 14 extra white hairs in my beard, so I've been counting them <laughs> steadily, and that's how I know how long it's been. You know, otherwise time is meaningless. Uh, I, don't, I don't even try with the beard, Brooks, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm <laughs> like 99% white now, so it's not, it's not a good look. Well, you know, time creeps on, and it's how we deal with it that matters. Uh, oh, yeah. have you been, how have you been doing in this past year? Yeah, really well, Brooks. Really well, to be honest with you. Just just been keeping busy, just in magic world. You know, that's where I'm, I'm happiest. You know that. So, uh, just just thrashing out a few stories and um, yeah, just just enjoying my time and my family. And yeah, I, I live quite a simple life. I've said that before. It's um, it's cozy and it's nice. And but then every so often, I like to um, you know get down into the darkness and um, you know play with some friends. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's speak about that darkness, uh, man. Yeah. This th- this story we we've waited until you know basically you're, you're rounding off like our halfway point uh, through yeah. the season, and I even have had several people yeah. say, "Hey, where's Mark Taus's stories? What's going on here?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were inundated with them on the last season, I think. Like, but yeah, that's sort of <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You wrote half of our season. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's it's good. I'm, I've been listening to. Um, not all of them, um, but there's some crackers on there for sure. So, so I have been keeping up to date. Not as much as I'd like to, uh, to be honest with you. I'll be very candid on that one. But there are some cracking, fresh new voices coming out, and it's it's great to see. Yeah, you know, I, I, I love what you do with the the stories, and you know, it's it's always a pleasure to listen to. Yeah, the Grey Rooms has been evolving this season, um, yeah. especially this season, just like you said, in terms of the, the newer voices that we are finding, as well as a stable uh, group of, of, of voice actors we already have, you know, bringing in new uh, uh, experienced authors, bringing in new authors, period. Uh, it's been oh, it's been a fantastic ride. So, yeah, we, we've had a great time in this past year. It's a hell of a cast on the Eric's tune as well. It's like some, I don't know how many voices. That was great. It was like. Yeah, oh. well, you, you <laughs> I was just going to say you wrote this story with, with so many characters that uh, in the past, I think you've kind of done more of a, a focused in on a single character with one or two, you know, other side characters milling about uh, some kind of monster. This, I feel like for us, is not not new for you, but just new for us to feature you uh, with the bigger cast. Yeah, I think I think as well for audio, sometimes an extended cast works better as well. It sort of breaks up the monologue aspect of it. And I've learned that I've learned that over time. You know, it's again, it's you know, the, the monologue is fine, but I think maybe sort of for for shorter pieces. But I think if you're gonna be looking at like a four thousand, five thousand word story, then I think you need to to break that up with um, a few different, you know, a few fresh voices. Right, right. Well then let's let's get into this. Let's start talking about this story. I mean, you came up with yeah. this this concept of this this guy that just wanted to prank his friends and <laughs> his prank just goes awry. And I mean in the most spectacularly wrong way possible. Um Oh yeah. And you really captured uh, for me. I, I've been to Alcatraz, which is a very famous uh, penitentiary. Me too. On an, on an, oh, you have yeah. been? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a fascination with um, with old prisons and whatnot. But that, that the story actually uh, originated. Well, I, I actually pulled that prank, funny enough. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. But that, that is actually oh, oh, oh. Uh, this okay. is pretty much as close to nonfiction as you get with me, to be fair. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that shortly because it's pretty hilarious. But it's yeah. like you're answering my questions before I even ask them. This <laughs> yeah, is amazing. Yeah, I was I, no, no, no. I was gonna. I was so excited to get into this. Like, how yeah. how did you even come up with this concept? Because I, like I said, I've been to Alcatraz. You've been there, and I was going to ask you did you did you lay down in a 
in a prison while you wrote this story because you, yep. you captured that 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 angst <laughs> of being stuck. You know, the the everyone is like, well, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. You know, it, 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 the the element of how even the guards, you know. Evilness attracts evilness, and even the guards becoming, you know, bad people towards, you know, towards our character. There's so much going on here. How, how did you even start with all of this? Yes, I it, again, there's a bit of a backstory to the actual story itself, but yeah, I did lay down on a concrete slab um, for more for longer than I longer than I cared to put it that way. But um, I, do you like playing pranks on people? Is is that something you like? Is that something you enjoy? Or is that just me? Is my evil? My evil side. I mean, I'm known to pull a prank or two. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay. Well, like you know, I've got to be careful who I prank. If I prank my wife, then the consequences far outweigh any immediate pleasure. So that that she's off limits for sure. But well, this is why I was laughing. Yeah, yeah. You want to be very careful yeah, with who you're pranking yeah. because it will blow up in your face exactly like your character. Oh, well, big time, big time. Yeah, many many times it has. But you know, I, I haven't pranked it for a long time, so um, I don't think I dare now. But but look, I mean, uh, my my um my first experience of of that kind of explosive reaction in terms of pranking someone uh, was actually my mother, and we this was a trip to. Now I can't. I was trying to remember this morning. I can't remember if it was London or Whitby, but it wasn't. It wasn't a, a dungeon per se, but it was. Um, it was. I think it's like a, called Dracula's Castle or something along those lines. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you know, she's going to be scared to death. This isn't going to end well for her. And I thought, how can I even, how can I play on that a little bit more? But I, I didn't need to. That They sort of scripted itself because on the entranceway, the stairway down, the banisters aligned with fake rats so there's little hairy things on the banister and i put my left hand on one because it's so dark you can't see it's so dark so that's that's the point and like in my my heart you know jumped in my mouth and i'm like geez what the hell is this and then i realized you know i, I got along and i felt i felt the tail and i thought oh my goodness oh my goodness and i you know that that's the thing there's you've got the the good part of you that would turn around to her and say just be careful mom on the stairs because there's rats on the banister or you've got sixty percent badness, which is me. I think that I think the darkness just that way is a lightness for me, whereas I just let it flow. And I remember because it was a bit a bit of a bustle, and there's quite a few people in front and quite a few people behind. And I remember just sort of wincing, knowing knowing what was about to go down, but I didn't anticipate just just exactly what would happen. Um, but she she put her hand on the rat. And then turned around, screamed, and she grabbed this woman's breast behind her. And um, <laughs> the, I mean, the, the, I turned around at the scream, and I saw this woman's face, and her mouth was agape, and she couldn't believe it. The eyes were wide. It was, it was just, it was, you know what I mean? It was the best possible reaction you could ever hope for, and that's just stayed with me for, for you know, till this day. It was absolutely hilarious. But the good thing was as well, she didn't immediately remove the hand. She kind of left it hanging there for quite some time. And the woman had to tell her, you know, your, you know, oh, excuse me, love, your hand's still on my tit. And it was, it was it's just more than I could ever hope for, Brooks. It's just more than I could ever hope for. <laughs> so you, you, faced, you faced no consequences whatsoever for this prank? I did. I did. There, were, <laughs> there were consequences a little bit because you say, oh, you know, why didn't you warn me? And I said, well, that's why I love them. So <laughs> you've just explained why I didn't warn you. Um, so that was my first experience of... of um, pranking my mother and that was the first time i've had well not pranking per se but that's the first time i've seen such an explosive reaction to fear um and that stayed with me so years later yeah and i've pranked her ever since i used to sort of hide behind pillars and stuff in the dark and i'm, I'm surprised she's still with us to this day <laughs> to be honest with you but we also went to um when she came to australia we went to geelong jail which is an old jail uh, they used to execute people, hang people there. So it's full of that. As soon as you walk in, you know, you get that cold dankness. You get that the atmosphere of that bad things went down. It's a fantastic environment. And we went into this cell and the tour guide was sort of showing us around. So this is pretty much a reenactment of exactly what happened. Obviously, you know, not towards the end. but And on the way out, I, I whispered across to Steph and I said, Steph, Steph. You know, I really, really want to pull a prank on my mum. 
I really, really want to get her because this is ideal. And, and my, I had this idea of just laying on a slab. And as soon as she, she walked in, like, you know, Steph was going to say, oh, you know, there's something else you need to see. And I was just going to basically just raise myself up or make a groaning sound or something along those. Just, just like in the story. Right. Yeah. Leonard said, or excuse me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jake said that he would do that. Exactly. Yeah. And I was just laying there and I was, you know, uh, first, first few seconds, I didn't think anything of it. I thought, well, this is, this is really bloody uncomfortable. Um, and then, you know, as time went by, <laughs> you, you really, as, as the voices fade and the footsteps fade, that's when your imagination starts going nuts, as you can imagine. Yeah, you know, just like a kid gripping the duvet, you know, in the darkness of your room. It's you hear things, you hear scratching, you, you see things, you see, you know, shadows moving within shadows. You feel the breeze. Everything feels colder, you know, be, be, without the sort of the the, the physical uh, proximity to other people. It's 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 just such an odd thing. And I kind of it's like a roller coaster ride. As I said before, it's kind of a love hate for me. You know, I, I get I get the prickles and I get the fear, but I also love that exhilaration of it and the ex, you know the increased heartbeat, the sweaty palms. But you know, I was laying there and I was I just lost concept of time and I'm thinking, oh, where the bloody hell are they? You know, I mean they've, they've been gone ages. So you know, again, just 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 lying there, just just trying to trying to control my fear. Which sounds really crazy, but if you lie down in a you know in a in a prison cell in the darkness, you know anyone that doesn't get a little bit um, of adrenaline, then you know credit to them. But so I just gave up and I went looking for them, and um, and I said, Steph, oh, Steph, what's going on? And she just turned around to me and she said, Mark, calm as a bitch. And I thought, I thought, yeah, well played, love, absolutely fantastic, beautiful, well they played. They got you back. <laughs> they got me back. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought, yeah, that was great. And you know what? I uh, never thought anything of it at the time, but now, perfect story, perfect story. And you know, how can I extend on that? How can I make it even more? You know, how can I sort of increase the calm relevant even further? So that that's where it originated from. Sorry, mum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I uh <laughs> just just to go about the pranking of the parents, you know. I I also did prank my mom. Yeah, here and there, but I think I stopped yeah. at one point when I was a kid because I <laughs> there was a particular and I remember very well there was a particular night and like uh she would have to walk from the living room through the hallway past my bedroom door to go to the bathroom. And so yeah. every night, you know, I would go to bed at my, you know, assigned time and kind of sounds like I'm in the military, but I'd go to bed, you know, when I was supposed to. And then I would know that my mom would stay awake and watch the news or she would ba- basically do stuff in the living room, have the TV on. I could always kind of hear it through the wall, but that was just my life. For whatever reason, one night I heard her you know, she had to use the bathroom. She walked down the hallway past my bedroom, and I thought, now's the time. And I yep. snuck out of my room. I snuck into the living room, and then in a panic of like, wait, what am I actually going to do here to scare her? I went and hid behind the couch. You know, the couch kind of butts up against uh, the wall. And so she came back, and she sat down to watch her TV, and then the panic was on like, well, now how do I scare her? Now I'm stuck here behind this couch. <laughs> I shouldn't be here. I should be in my bed. She doesn't know I'm here. And I guess in my all, you know, my brilliance, I I like I squared my shoulders against the back of the couch and I put my feet up against the wall and I just pushed really hard. So it like oh. It like budged the couch forward a tiny bit, and as Ooh, I did it, I just yeah. went like rah. You know, I made a big sound, <laughs> and she screamed like I have never heard her scream. And then the <laughs> the tears just began to flow. Like she oh, was. Oh no! It's, <laughs> so oh, as a, no! So as a young man, seeing my mother crying, I I started to cry too, and it oh, was a terrible no. mess. And I'm pretty sure oh, I don't remember the consequences, but I do remember that I never ever pranked her again. And to this That's day, such a bad experience. <laughs> I mean, he could be pulling off some of the best pranks in the world if it wasn't for that, you know, that initial. Oh my goodness! Yeah, man. my my oh, pranking dear. my pranking profession was cut short at that moment. So. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What could have been? What could have been? You could have been in the yeah. circus or anything by right. now if it wasn't for that. But you know, right, yeah. right, right. But yeah, I wow. never had any karma. She never got me back. Maybe she's waiting to this day. Who knows? I don't. She may be. She may be. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Look, it, it is. It is quite evil. I'm the first. To admit, but, mm-hmm. but um, I remember as well one one Christmas another incident. Just just speaking of pranks, but 
Uh, have you ever had one of those robotic hands, you know, those those ones where you pull a lever and the hand sort of like wraps up into a claw? Have you, have you right, seen those? Right, it moves the fingers individually, yeah. That's yeah. right, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So I remember I remember we were just, um, my family and my auntie Jean were just gathered around the TV and they were watching, I don't know if it was a Queen's speech or, you know, something or other. I remember creeping up behind her and I know she had like, uh, she was eating a mince pie. And I was really, really quiet and nobody else saw me. And I thought, this is going to be absolutely priceless. So I remember just sticking the, the robotic hand over the oh, couch no. and just grabbing her on the right shoulder. Oh, my goodness me. Uh, that, oh, my goodness me. It, you know, I mean, you, you talk about this high-pitched scream. And, you know, it, it's sort of, you know the one that reserved for movies that you just – Yes, right, happens the Wilhelm scream, not real. yeah. Oh, this is one of those. So that that sort of that that, that sort of blew that sort of um, that conspiracy out the window. This was a proper organic kind of like oh, I'm <laughs> going to wee myself kind of scream. I remember I went round and I, I, was, I felt so bad, and I, I was I was you know, I said I'm really sorry, Auntie Jean. I'm really sorry, Auntie Jean. And I actually I turned around and not on the on the plate <laughs> next to a mince pie was her teeth. <laughs> her teeth had fallen out. <laughs> and this is this is why I haven't given up pranking. This is why I'm still pranking to this day, Brox, because <laughs> like I've just had so many good good results. It's, it's too good to give up. Obviously, you got to admit that. That's that's just you can't. You know, that was priceless. Yeah. Also, you were a terrible child. Oh my God, how dare <laughs> you? Terrible, I'm still a terrible <laughs> child. <laughs> I haven't grown up really. But, this is why yeah. you write horror stories. This is your therapy to get through. <laughs> Whatever oh man! It, caused it you is, to do this is. to people. Like I've always said to you, like like writing writing stories, it's just like being a kid again. And I think I think it's it's that nostalgic melancholy of like you know just just being able to do what you want. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that that was a long story about about the the origination of, of Eric's tune. Yeah. Sure, sure. All right. So 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 back to that then. So you had this concept. Yeah. You're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna play with this idea of you know. I'm I'm pretending to be you. I'm going to play with this idea of what I've already done, you know, prior. Yeah. So you you conceptualize this character Jake. He's gonna he's gonna prank his friends. Now, how did you then, in in you know the the beauty of being Mark Taus, how did you then start to assign the horror and assign the dread to it? How did you work your way into like, well, this is how his prank goes wrong, and now these guards are going to come and they're they you know, case of mistaken identity. It's almost like he like went back in time or somehow shifted realities, you know, and became, you know, this, this character of Leonard who then just yeah. gets his ass beat for a good cause, I suppose. But, you know, whatever, an eye for an eye is never what we want. But how did you then start to push forward with this concept? Yeah, I mean, that's it. I, I, I just wanted, uh, you, you know me, I mean, I, I've always said that. I just like to really, really put the character through, through the ringer. Um, so I just wanted... Um, I wanted the karma not to be a one-off. I, d- I just wanted to to repeat itself, and and I was trying to sort of work out, well, how can I how can I do that? How can I do it so he's, he's sort of trapped in this cycle of what Lenin's been trapped in? And the the story just you know organically grew from there, really. Um, you know, the the sort of the fact that Leonard was still there in the room, that was his home. Somebody had come in, you know, li- lying on his bed, you know, just for the sake of a prank, you know, so ex- exploiting this this man's life that has been behind bars just for the sake of getting a laugh from his friends. So, you know, I, I, I wanted the punishment to be um, fitting, well, the crime, so to speak, just in terms of, you know, Leonard's a bad guy, but also this guy's come on the scene and is, is basically, you know, just trying to make a, an absolute hogwash of his, of his existence. Um, so I, I just wanted... I was, I was trying to find out what what could I do, you know, to to sort of really sort of up the stakes. And then it's then I thought, okay, well we'll have the whistling wind, which will turn into the main guard's tune, Eric's tune, which I thought was done so well in the show. And and the the whistling, how it fades out with the whistling, I think that's just fantastic, absolutely spot on. Just in terms of creating the eeriness and the the ominous approach of these three guards that will continue their approach on a regular basis until jake can somehow find his way out into the next plane and that that's just this is something i was like it was flooding around in my head you know how, how can i relay that so it, again you, you know me it, it all sort of came together really 
Yeah, I I love how you kind of shoehorned in this concept of like, again, like that, like, Ugh, that angst of like, wh- I, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be going through this. Like that, there cannot yeah. be anything more scary and frustrating than like you could be getting chased by a monster, right? And that's scary. This monster's yeah. coming after you, and that's its intent. It's it's the monster. It's doing what it wants to do. Yeah. But if the monster kept saying to you, "Uh, your name is George. I I, I eat all Georges. I'm gonna get you, George." You're like, "No, no, my name is Mark. Leave me alone. Don't eat me." Somehow that's worse to me. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You're literally trying to take everything, everything away from you everything yeah. you know take away your whole history your whole your whole life and replace it with someone that is a murderer and you know is going to be you know exposed to however many <laughs> scenes of torture for the rest of his life i mean it's like i mean god 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 forbid anything like that ever happens to me i mean i probably deserve it after all this but i hope not <laughs> i mean gee whiz there's there's not much worse i can think of out there to be honest with you um, there really isn't that was sort of endless torture, yeah. you know, just, just waiting for, waiting for the whistling in that horrible little cell. Oh my goodness. No. Right. Right. Well, it, to me also interesting that like Leonard himself, you know, is in the story. He's kind of there with Jake. Of course the guards can't hear Leonard because every time Leonard speaks and Jake's like, don't you hear him? The guy, he, that, he's Leonard is here. It's not me. You know, so that again, that, that, that frustration, frustration on top of oh, yeah. all of the scariness happening. But it's interesting, interesting to me how Leonard uh, was very calm and collected about it all. I mean, had he, he must have gone through the same thing or at least something very similar uh, with the guards because they just absolutely hated him to death enough to, to beat him and to torture him. You know, and then that, that, that bit at the end of like, nah, Leonard never actually escaped and made it out. He you know, it was just a story the guards told because clearly the guards must have also killed the real Leonard. Absolutely. And it makes you wonder how many other guards have, have you know, sorry, how many other prisoners have been exposed to the same thing, how many other cells are haunted, how many people might play a prank in the future and, you know, sort of you become a cropper as well. So, yeah, it's I, I just I love prisons. You know, there's something about them. It's um, it's the, the environment is is yeah, it's, it's claustrophobic, but so vacuous at the same time. And it's it's just the perfect environment for something like that. I, I love going to us tours for that reason. Yeah, there is an energy. You're absolutely right. Yeah, right. There's this there energy you feel. So like we're going through yeah. Alcatraz. I. Uh, you know, you wear your headphones as you go on the tour around the prison. And I remember – I've done it several times as a kid, then once as an adult. And I just remember very eerily similar to your story that like as I'm walking around and there's other tourists with me walking around this prison, you just kind of can – fade a little bit into the older plane, the older existence of the history that yeah. was already there. And you can almost hear the clanging of the bars. You can almost hear That's right. all of the prisoners chatting. And yet you're just on a tour of an empty prison. And yeah, so absolutely. I've always, yeah. I've always felt that, especially in places, you know, abandoned buildings or just any kind of site where something horrific has happened, there's this residual energy that la- that stays behind. You certainly never walk into an empty room and go, oh my gosh, a happy party must have just happened here. I feel all the love and the joy. <laughs> no one, no one ever <laughs> feels right. that. But, <laughs> you, but you walk into yeah, an old you know, room and you, you can feel the the pain that maybe happened already it's like a stain in the air you can yeah and, and I'm like yeah I mean I'm, I'm not a I'm not a I don't believe in in ghosts or anything monsters or anything like that but there is definitely what feels like a residual energy there um, and and it, it, you know it, an extra sort of coldness uh, to the whole thing um, which just I think heightens the senses and. And I suppose that's where arguably you can say people begin to see things or people, you know, they, they you know, see little orbs moving or, you know, because of these heightened senses they're, they're, they're driving themselves on. So it's, it's an interesting concept. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I just love old buildings, love old jails, love anything like that. Just And, and I, it, it's just, yeah, it's perfect. It's a perfect environment for a story. The smells... You know, it's everything. It's it's just the wind whistling. It's it's just I love it. Absolutely love it. Have you ever gone? It's called urban exploring. Have you ever heard of no, that? No, I've never heard of it. You no. basically are going into. I mean, we don't have like a bunch of old derelict towns or anything around here that I know of. But yeah. for sure, there'll be like a historical building or maybe like a, an old abandoned hospital. It's it's usually like a, a or an old high school. There's just some kind of abandoned 
uh, area, like a plot of land with very old, decrepit buildings on it. And All right, whether okay. it's whether it's legal or not, you know, we won't get into that. But you go and you explore that, you know, in a safe manner. And so un- unofficially, like without a guide, you just you just yes. go and just with a yes. group of friends and just go and yeah, yes. To get a to get gotcha. a gist of it, there's there's gotcha. a YouTube channel called um, the Proper People, and this is what this is what they do. And then of course there's tons of other channels that do this as well, but. There's this – there's just this sense of like let's say that you are exploring an old abandoned hospital and not not just for anything being scary or whatnot. But but just going through room to room, again, you feel this residual energy. You, you know that many hundreds of other lives uh, interacted here decades prior. There, there were many exchanges, yeah. people being happy and sad and laughing and crying. And there's just such this touching way – you you, t- you said it that it it, it heightens uh, your senses, so you might hear something that's not there, not because it's actually a scary thing happening, but because you you are just absorbing some of that energy, and and I don't know, there's something magical about that. So there is, I've- yeah, and the majority of that is is made must be made up of negative energy because you know you, you've got the hospitals where. Not, not a lot of happiness happens generally in hospitals. No one, oh, great, I get to go and lie in a bed and eat, you know, <laughs> shit food for, for a week or two. And you've got the psychi- you know, psychiatric ward and you've got, like you say, the old um, prisons. Not, nothing good really ever happened there. So most of that energy is, is, is negative energy. So that obviously carries much more influence than you know, walking into like an old bloody, well, I don't know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head because everything old just sort of seems scary all of a sudden. <laughs> but, uh, I was going to say an old museum, but that's, that's no, that no, doesn't work, does it? But, um, but yeah, I, I think, I think that negative energy, the fact that, you know, you, you could hear them, them clanging their little tins, you know, behind the bars, you can almost smell, you know, the rust, the piss and the shit and everything else. It's like, yeah, it's, it's just, um, yeah, it's it's immense, and it's yeah, it definitely carries an energy. So let me ask you, how yeah. do you do this? Because I, I I gave an interview recently with another show, a show that you've also been on, uh, the Hotter Show. And- oh man, I, I've got to say, right? I've got to say, I know I've already said it on Facebook. That was a tremendous interview. That was if if I could if I could. Um, talk as well as i could write it would end up something like that honestly it, it was it was absolutely awesome and it was very inspiring extremely uplifting and i i almost feel the need that we need to sort of you know get that interview out there and sort of give it more of a build-up because it was just it was such a you know such a, a motivational interview it was mm-hmm, fantastic mm-hmm. i thoroughly enjoyed it yeah yeah tj hotter is a, is a great uh interviewer and we were talking about you and <laughs> i am i'm a firm believer that we need to use you as a barometer for horror you know we'll call it the the <laughs> tau awesome. scale or we'll come up with some other you know we'll copyright some other name but you just have this this ability this innate ability it seems to just take anything and make it scary oh my coffee cup well let me write you know a 20 page story <laughs> about this ridiculously horrific scary coffee cup and all the ways in which i'm suffering now i know you can do it <laughs> i don't know how you do it and here we are we're, we're, we're a year later you've probably written a thousand other stories in the last year and i just want to ask you again what is ha- what where did, were you born what happened how did you get this gift what is going on here what what existence are you from <laughs> i haven't got three sixes on my head or anything like that okay no i don't honestly i i I don't know. I don't know. It's just one of those. Like I can't. I can't make anything with my hands. I'm not good at woodwork. I, you know, I, I tried to make a bloody post box once, and we turned it into a bed house, but it had a bloody big <laughs> screw going through the bottom. So that's a you know, I, I it's it's just something that I finally discovered after three decades, and it's just something that just clicks. You know, I, I don't know. It's it's you know, I, I, I sort of think of an idea or look at a painting or, or look at something, and it, it just it just kind of comes. Well, no, it's saying it, it doesn't always come. It, it either comes or it doesn't. And if it doesn't come, I'll just move on to the next thing. But you know, a, a lot of it is situational. It's, a lot of it is in terms of where you are mentally as well. So you know, you can look at something one day and nothing can come, and then you look at something the next day, depending on your mood, and something will something will reach out, and it's it's odd. You know, it's, it's, and that's happened a few times where I've, I've thought I really want to make a story about that, but I don't know, I don't know how to incorporate it. And then, sort of, you know, fourth or fifth day of passing it, ah, yeah, there you go, and it just kind of clicks. It just kind of clicks, and I think it's going back to something that um, King once said. Stephen King once said something about sort of sifting through all the crap 
you know, and if you, if you sift long enough, to, you know, you'll find the gold. And I think it's just getting rid of all that crap, you know, sort of looking at something and, and sort of looking at different ideas, looking at different concepts, looking at different scenery. And eventually, you know, if the idea is good enough, then it, it will just sort of jump out at you or it will stick or... Honestly, I, I don't know how to answer that question, Brooks. It's, you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's just, I just love it. And it's, yeah. You have such a persistence, though, that like you're, you're even saying it here that like you, you might hit a snag and then you just move on to the next thing. And I think yeah. maybe, maybe some other, you know, authors, something to learn would be that because they might get stuck and they're just like, no, I just can't do anything else yet until I get this done, you know, or they might feel guilty. Like I'm not a good writer because I can't figure this part out. And it just stops them in their tracks. You have this persistence yeah. of just, Oh, oh just a little bump. I'm going to step right over it and keep going. And maybe I'll come back and smooth it out later. That's great. It's, it's just like hitting the wall. It's just like, like I said, I think I said it once before. It's, it's like running, you hit a wall. You, you just got to keep going. You just got to keep, you can't give up. You can't, you can't, you know, sort of lose focus and, and go away and, and come back to it. You've just got to keep going. I just, I just think, I just, you know what I mean? It's like when, when I get, when I'm doing short stories that I just have to, I have to finish it in two or three days. I can't have it hanging over my head for a long period of time. Um, so it, it's just something I have to, I have to get out of my system and, you know, I'll, I'll just find a way through. I'll just sit there until it clicks and I'll maybe sort of write a couple of paragraphs, delete them, write a couple more, delete them until, until I'm happy with, with where it's going. Um, it's, it's so hard to answer that question. It really is. <laughs> I think you'll be answering that question for the rest of your life, it seems like, which is the beauty of it all, because you're just yeah. going to keep being you. I, I, I'd like to think I'll be answering that question the rest of my life. But, um, <laughs> you know, but I mean, look, it doesn't always work. I mean, that this weekend I spent three days on a story um, going through that wall and saying, no, Mark, you're going to make this work. You're going to make this work. You know, it's going to happen. And, you know, I got, I got to the end of it and I was thinking – yeah, okay. Um, this doesn't really work, but I, and I was cursing myself because it's one of those things where you know you, you can sort of almost kid yourself. You can almost sort of blindside yourself into thinking something's working, um, and then get to the end of it and, and find ah, it doesn't really work. It's not really um... so. That that's the problem sometimes of being a panster is that you can uh, have this false sense of security that you can bloody carry it off. You can make it work, and then you get to the end of it, read through anything, ah, uh, not quite. So you know, but that's rare. That that's that's I've only I think I've done that three times. Um, generally, it it just yeah, as long as you don't force it and you just let it flow, um, then it it just kind of works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So uh, you know, how in the last year, how have you grown um, as an author? Have you uh, been working on more books? Have you been submitting to more you know podcasts? Like, do you feel even more accomplished uh, a year later since we've spoken? I do, I do. Yeah, I, I certainly do. I'm, I'm starting to get um, sort of high pay rates for my for my stories now, and you know that that's the sort of big target I was aiming for. And something I'm aiming for for 2022 is just to um, – so I've written a few novellas. I've got novellas coming out until mid-2023. So on that front, I'm sort of okay for a while in terms of long fiction. Uh, there's a lot going on, and I don't want to sort of you know, put too much in there because I'll just, you know, I'll just burn out the readers, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we can talk about what's coming out. But, but I'm going back to short stories again for a while just because my, just my, my love of them for once. Um, and – yeah, so I, but I'm, I'm, the, the way I'm writing is, it's not something conscious. It, it's just something that's happening. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my stories and yeah, they are higher quality. And it, that's just practice. That's all that is. That's, you, you, you know, you keep, you keep writing and you just, you just get better as, as a natural course. Um, so yeah, but look, I'm, I'm starting to look at those higher paying market, uh, markets and just trying to have a bit more credibility in terms of where I'm sending my work. Um, and just trying to make, you know, I mean, this is something I ultimately would like to do full time one day, or whether or not that will ever happen, who knows. Um, but I just want to, I just want to take it a bit more seriously, uh, but without losing that evil sense of humor that I've got going on. And, and, that, and that's why actually a lot of my stories are turning to this sort of comedic black comedic kind of effect. And I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying that because it's, it's really helping me so i can be you know a bit more literary with my approach but also i can incorporate some some real fun elements into it 
And right, I think without right. that, I'd find it really heavy going. Um, so I'm just having a lot of fun writing those kind of humorous stories. Yeah, horror and, and comedy definitely go hand in hand because the, I, I feel like they're also some of the most prevalent. I mean, it's, they're two ep- opposite ends of the spectrum, but they're yeah. some of the most prevalent uh, types of media entertainment that us humans crave. We want we want all the funny stuff. We want to be laughing our asses off or, yeah. you know, we want all of the scary horror stuff so we can be trying to Right. We want it all at once in one, one yeah, big yeah. punch because right? you want everything now. Uh, and that's it. You're right. It, it works for that reason. And from my point of view as well, it stops me getting lost in the quagmire of, of, of sort of darkness as well, because sometimes you find that and it's like, oh, my goodness me. You know, it's not that you don't enjoy writing it, but it's like, well, this this isn't really me. I'm, I'm cheeky. I've got a sense of humor. So I'm, well, I need to I need to incorporate that personality into the story. Otherwise, it's just another story trying to tick a, you know, a list of requirements. So so that's why I wanted to go back to short stories and really have some fun. And I am at the moment. Um, you know, I've, I've just written a few lately that are just, I mean, you know, when you're sitting at the keyboard and you're in stitches and, you, you know, it's working. And I can't wait to get those out there for that reason. So, so yeah, it, I think it's important just to stick to what you, you know, what comes from the heart. And for me, it is that twisted darkness combined with that evil sense of humor, the prankster. Well, hey, as we as we draw to a close here, tell the fans and the followers what are you working on now, and also like where can we find you know more of all of your stuff, things that you've done in the last year. Awesome. Okay, so like, there's there's a hell of a lot. Um, so we've got Nature's Perfume coming out on the 11th of March from Journal Stone. Um, that's a novella. Includes a short story uh, called The Masterpiece as well. So that that's from Journal Stone. Um, it's available to order directly from their website now, but I think it's Amazon some point this week. Um, we have then, uh, one I'm really, really looking forward to for the aforementioned reasons, Brooks, and that's one last shindig, which is ultimately a novella in the similar vein to my debut Nana in the fact that we are sharing a coach ride with a bunch of geriatrics essentially to hell. Um, so I'll actually read the blurb from that if that's okay. Yeah, to, for sure. Is that all right? That's really cheesy, but I thought it might Go as ahead. well. But, all right. So this is one last shindig. The world as we know it is coming to an end, but this group of geriatrics on one last shindig have no idea what's in store. As far as they're concerned, they're on a quick jaunt to see a cave full of glowworms and then back to the hotel for apple pie and custard. So get the muscle spray ready and change into your big underpants because you're going to need them. Take your seat on this, hilarify, sorry, on this hilarious and terrifying coach tour into hell. So this was hilarious <laughs> to me to write. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. From, from start to finish, just loved it. It's, uh, it's, it's funny and dark. It's everything that, that I am. So, yeah. When will this be available or is it already available? So this will be available. I think it's coming out on Godless uh, on the 18th of March. And I think it hits Amazon the first week in April. Okay. So soon, within, within the month or so. Yeah, within the month. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And it's one of my, um, the last thing as well, just one of my uh, favorite novellas uh, called Hope Wharf um, is getting a brand new look. Uh, Hope Wharf is, is a very dark story, but I made the mistake of, um, well, the cover was kind of inflicted on me by the publisher at the time. Um, of, it, it sort of creates this very YA aesthetic, but it's, it's most certainly not. It's, it's coming of age, small town claustrophobia with big, big dark secrets. Um, so I'm getting a new cover for that from the fantastic Don Noble. So I'm going to sort of relaunch that. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's a story I'm incredibly proud of as well. So there's a lot going on in the next sort of two months, um, as well as some great short story releases, you know, some stuff on the No Sleep podcast and, uh, Tales to Terrify and Creepy and all that kind of jazz. So yeah, it's, it's busy, but it's fun. So you're still you're still definitely submitting stories to other horror podcasts as well, because your stories make fantastic audio dramas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I've had a couple on the No Sleep podcasts of late, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I love I love hearing them. I mean, it's it's you know, the the sort of production values these days of, of some of these podcasts are just fantastic, um, you know. But but yeah, like I, I have I'm having a rest from long fiction. I'm just having a break from that because I don't honestly know 
when I get the time to sit down and, and write a longer piece, as I said to you before, it's, you know, for me, I, I need to write it in that sh- short chunk. I need that time. Um, so for now, just going back to short stories makes, makes sense for me. That's awesome. Well, I, you know, I wanted to personally thank you uh, for everything that you do for the Grey Rooms because you have been with us since like day three, is <laughs> basically since the beginning. Uh, but you've done, yeah. you've done just so much um, support within the community uh, with our fans and followers and interacting with people and just the general way in which you're just such an upstanding person uh, I, I think that oh, anyone man, ever I, oh, man. Oh, you, you're, oh. you're so humble even listen to how you're responding to me right here that's what I'm I, talking about I would about. love to spend more time on, on Discord I mean that's one thing that I, I said to myself at the beginning of uh, this year I was going to try and do that but mm-hmm. I just, I just, I don't know how to find the time. I, I don't know how to make the time. You know, I've got people asking, you know, that sort of, that I feel really guilty because I've got books on the, the TBR pile, um, you know, that I, I just can't get around to reading because my time is, is just sort of allocated so precisely. Um, sure, it's, sure. And, that's, I, and that sounds like, it sounds like excuses, but I, right, honestly, no. I, I, I don't know how to make that extra time. I mean, I'm, you know, it, it, sometimes I'm writing till midnight just to try and get something done, but yeah. I don't know how how else to juggle my time, really. You're, you're being humble again. That, that's not a barometer of the person that I'm uh, insinuating that you are. <laughs> I, I'm just meaning just the, 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 the meaningful interactions that I, you know, I have with you that when I hear other people have spoken with you, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. We all love you intently because you're just such a decent, good person that you're, you're just you're uplifting in terms of interaction. So it's not the quantity of how often you're on Discord. It's yeah, it's the quality of who you are. That's 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 what I'm getting at. So oh, thank you. That's so nice of you to say. Thank you. That's awesome. Look, I mean, it's 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 mad because yeah, I, I, like I said, I stumbled upon this 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 horror family three years ago, and it's it's been brilliant. It really, on the whole, it's been absolutely fantastic. And I'm I'm I'd sort of I enjoy talking about it, enjoy interacting with people about it. You know, uh, and most importantly, I, I just enjoy, you know, being lost in that magic world. And I, that, that's always going to be the case, I think. You know, there's, there's no going back now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see where, where it takes me. And, yeah, I'm interested to see where the Grey Rooms goes as well. I mean, generally, you know, I know uh, I think we're on season five next and I haven't put anything in there as yet. Um, but, you know, you, you might have got sick of me by now, but that's, that's a fair comment. Nah, but nah, uh, what, never. What I, what, I tend to, <laughs> what I tend to do is because I... You know, being the impatient sort, I don't hang on to stories uh, for very long. I've, I really struggle hanging on to them. I like to to get them out there. So I'll generally tend to write, you know, a few just before submission and, and get them sent in because uh, I, I love hearing the stuff on the grey rooms. It's, you know, it's, it's absolutely awesome. We love here having you here. So definitely season five uh, submissions will be ending soonish. I think, I think it's April, May, is it? please may Maybe yeah you know what don't quote me yeah. i i don't run that department no that's all right that's so, so I, I you know I've, I've got it in my diary as april like april with an exclamation mark just write some freaking gray room stories quickly so yeah please yeah. please please write a couple for us <laughs> well, <laughs> well it was great for you uh, to join us tonight mark i appreciate you taking the time to sit and chat and i thank you for sharing your world with us here in the gray rooms thank you brooks love what you do mate <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, and as usual, the biggest thank you goes out to our fans and followers who listen daily and spread the good word of Bob. May you languish, lament, and loathe, but always with love. Hashtag stay gray. Take care and enjoy your evening, Mark. Thanks, Brooks. You too, but... Thank you. And good night, folks. Bye! Join us each week after every episode for another edition of Behind the Door.